Forty years ago, I sailed across the Western Atlantic to Newfoundland in the hope that I might be of some service showing the rest of the world the NT people's dramatic struggle for existence. I love my summers. I love gardening, flower gardening and all that kind of stuff. And I love beaches. <laughs> but uh, I looked out one day a week, actually. And I said, long time before I get on a beach here. Good time to come to Newfoundland, right? And come to the Northern Peninsula. Uh, that's what I tell the tourists all the summertime. A deep breath of fresh air. You survive summer. Badass. That's Steve Shepard. This year I had the opportunity to take my moose with a bow. Where'd the arrow go? And I don't know if I'll ever use the rifle again. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah, he got that. You know he got that. Are you gonna mount that can now? There. I don't like to toot my own horn, but you know, it takes somewhat some more skill to get that moose close to you or, or for you to get close to a moose. Um, it's just different. My dad lived here in the 70s and the robe wasn't that great, you know, the snow clearing probably wasn't that great and you were isolated, you know, even, well, up until the 60s there was no road here so you were really isolated. There's been days where, you know, there's been three or four days in a row or maybe a week where you couldn't travel on the coast or whatever. Again, if you're going to live here, um, there has to be a part of you that becomes a little bit resourceful. We're going to drop. Here. I've been on snowmobile November, December, January, February, March, April, and May. I think for me it's a sanity thing. Like, if you're into the rural way of life, being able to endure those long months of the winter gives you something to do. And if that's not your thing, then you're going to have, you know, it could be a long winter. The deeper my heart falls in love. Shell here, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. You want to see it now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, there's abalone shell. I got. Uh, sorry, I got. I got abalone shell in there, and I got big ones in there, not cut. And I got this kind of. This is uh, this. I bought this about 30 years ago. Let me show you some of it now. Well, my hobby is making guitars, and but I've got away from that now. I don't seem to got older, and I sort of. Uh, you know, been there and did it a few times. Those are the regular pieces because the shell is, is curved. Yeah, I don't put any numbers on them. And they're not that important to me. Anybody that grew up in an, an outport back in the day or even now, you know, you had something that had to be done, had to be built, you had to do it yourself. If you couldn't find a part, you had to make the part, not the cases, you know. That's why, that's why you had to get along. If you couldn't, well, you, you didn't get along very well. I'm a person that, I'm a hands-on person. I learned pretty much everything 
by Gib it up. I learned how to knit by watching my mom. I learned how to crochet by watching my nan. That's, that's on my phone. I don't know who it is. So I'm not getting it. I had a camera in my hand as long as I could remember. And it was my hands. She put film in it and I'd be the one taking the pictures. And <laughs> hey, when I'm out, if I'm taking pictures, no matter how cold it is, I'm going to get my pictures. <laughs> Great day to get some head from. Gravy, there's gravy here in the roaster, and there's cutlery at the table. And some people can sit at the table. Thanks, buddy. Some people can sit in the living room. We'll just. The harbor. We used to love the harbor when it was just one sheet of clear ice that you could see the bottom. Back then, I could remember Dad taking us out in car and going up and just touching the brake and going around and around. If anybody did that today, they say you was crazy. Right? When I drive out to Carpool now, I feel that lonely feeling, knowing that it was so vibrant and so active. And right now, it's absolutely, you can't even buy a stick of chewing gum in Carpool anymore, right? And it used to be booming, it used to be booming. And I could remember that. restaurant we call it which was a, it was a hangout but we call it restaurant every Friday Saturday night Mother King would always have a dance and that was our go-to place we would listen to the jukebox uh, the records small ones 45s there you go just to go and see all the older ones like my mom and dad them just doing the square dance and, and things like that. 
and we would be dancing all night long. There's so much that we experienced that I would love for my grandchild to experience. But it's not going to happen. Quite a few people in this town that lived, that resettled in the, in the 90s. Culturally, it's completely different. You know, hopefully, some of those traditions and some of those cultural things they carried into their new community. They didn't stop doing those things for the simple fact they moved to a big city. They say we're isolated. To me, everybody knows everybody, and you know your neighbors. If I got a problem, I know I could call up somebody that is willing to help. I always say, that's what I always say, if you don't know what you're doing, then someone else does. I love it here. I love it here. And I sure did enjoy watching the boys jump. <laughs> But then it's even better when they fall. Lousy, don't hurt yourself, I'm fine. We are actually glad to see we're broken. <laughs>